Hello everyone, I am Sargam Tiwari and if you would like to know more about the power of brand storytelling and now how it can help in securing investor funding, then this session is for you. To present this topic, we have Shannon Weber with us today. Shannon is an strategic director at Blonde Engine. With more than 25 years of experience in working across Africa and Europe, she has a deep passion for building successful strategies, brands, and businesses from startups to large corporates. So Shannon, welcome to our event. How are you today? I'm very good. Hello everybody and welcome. Um, today I'm very excited to be talking about the power of brand storytelling and how it can help startups to attract investor attention. To kick off, I'm going to actually share a short, our short brand story with you. And then I'm going to unpack three very important things that you need to consider when pitching to obtain investor interest. So I'm just going to share my yes. so, uh, Shannon, I will be at the back stage. Now all stage will be yours. Thank you. All right. Great stories begin with a hero who has an idea that could change everything. Heroes see worlds within worlds. They dare to dream big. And share their dreams with others so that with a little support, they can rewrite the future. Blonde and Giant. Success stories start here. Okay, so I really believe that great stories begin with founders that have a really big vision. But for their vision to take foothold in the world, money and funding is going to be required. And attracting and getting investor interest can be a lot more complicated than you initially anticipated. So we have made it our mission at Blondin Giant to help our startups secure investor funding by finding the best way to present their vision to our VC investors. In my experience, there's only three things that you really need to consider when pitching. The first is you need to get investors interested in your story before you actually tell it. So here I can let you in on a little secret. If you understand how to use Netflix, you understand the principles of how to attract an investor. The same way that you go about selecting a movie is very, very similar to how these investors will select the startups that they want to pay attention to. We've all been there endlessly scrolling through Netflix, finding it difficult to pick just one film. That is called paralysis of choice. Now, you can't and definitely don't want to watch every single film before hitting play. So your brain will have to take various mental shortcuts to come to a final choice. And that decision-making process in your head could be something like, has a friend referred a movie to you because they understand your interests? Does the movie contain a cast of actors that you either love or hate? Does it have an appealing thumbnail and a compelling 50-word synopsis? Or did it get good media reviews? This assessment process is very similar to how VCs will review the hundreds of pitch decks that come across their tables before they select just a few startups to actually invest in. They are going to be looking for things like, were you referred to them by another investor? Do you possibly have a recognizable, well-known cast of advisors and founders? Do you have a polished and really well-designed pitch deck that portrays your success story in the first three to four slides? And when investors search the media, are your headlines going to come up? Only once investors have decided that your pitch is interesting, will they hit play. So never ever start your emails or your pitches by telling your story right away. What I can recommend is rather mention your superstar team of founders. Maybe you want to reference some interesting traction figures. Maybe try dropping some of your biggest clients, name dropping some of your biggest clients. All of this will switch investor interest on before you release your full narrative. The second most important point to remember is that you need to tell the most optimized version of your story. 
the ideal pitch is as short as it can be, but no shorter. So maybe think about your pitch as a Formula One race car. There is no part on that F1 car that isn't absolutely essential. It is a near perfect machine built for a singular purpose, and that purpose is to win. Every gram of weight that can be removed is removed. Every opportunity for optimization is seized, and every race performance will give clues into the next component that can be innovated on. So your pitch needs to also be a machine built for the singular purpose to stay ahead of your competition. You need to make sure that it's carved down to its most efficient shape and optimized with every single pitch you do. You need to experiment from pitch to pitch, reducing your content and seeing how investors react to it. You can also try improvising on your phrasing. Try and discover new and better ways of talking about your product or service. And definitely ask your investors or advisors for feedback on your pitches. Let them point out the parts to you that can be improved on. The more you do this, the more positive each encounter you will have with either an investor, a partner, or your future clients. That will make you more confident, and that confidence will get you the buy-in that you need. Lastly, you need to be able to differentiate or you will die. Never, ever, ever walk into a pitch and armed against the question, what makes your company different? You need to be prepared and have a really good answer, as this is literally the biggest deal breaker for most investors. The VCs that we typically work with will only invest in about 1% to 5% of the startups that actually pitch to them, which means their job is pretty much to say no more than it is to say yes. So whatever it is, your point of differentiation needs to do two things. It needs to be very different and unique, and you need to ensure that you have a competitive advantage. Please think long and hard about what makes your company uniquely positioned for success. Go and research similar businesses and industries. Make comparisons. And once you are armed with that information, you can decide if your business really has an edge or if you need to make some adjustments. Our investors are looking for companies and startups that stand out of the sea of sameness. They want companies that are clearly different and exciting. They are looking for a unicorn. Luckily, differentiation can come in many different forms. It could be that you've patented a new technology or that you have a superstar team of founders. Maybe you found a new way of rendering a service or even targeting a region that others might be overlooking. So in closing, next time you pitch to an investor or anyone, I'd like you to remember these three important things. Number one, sell your story before you tell your story. Ensure that your company looks appealing before you go into the nitty gritty detail. Number two, keep optimizing your pitch, removing content that is not necessary until there's no fat left on it. And thirdly and lastly, clearly identify what truly makes you unique and sets you apart from the crowd. This is really my advice to you and the recipe that we use for our startup partners to ensure they secure the funding that they need. I really hope that this advice will help you in your future on your own hero's journey. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Shannon, for showing us the real power of brand storytelling. And uh, I hope these uh, insights will help many startups in, in getting funding, right? So, uh, yeah, if you'd like, uh, we can add some questions here. Sure. So, uh, we have some questions. Uh, let me... Okay, so we have question from... Uh, Olivia, so what are the main pillars of uh, storytelling? So, what are the main pillars? So, there's a couple of pillars um, in terms of storytelling, and it's quite a methodical process. So, first of all, we need to unpack your value proposition. We need to unpack your traction figures, um, the size of market that you're going to target, the type of industry, and then literally compile that into a compelling narrative that will literally get investor attention. So it is a bit of a process, but I would suggest that in a pitch deck, you go no more than 12 to 15 slides at the most, and the first three to four are the most important. 
So how are you going to make money? How soon are you going to make money? Why are you different? What makes you unique? And what is the size of market that you're actually going to be taking on? That would be the first thing they look for. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Shannon. We are running out of time here. So yeah. So thank you, everyone, again, for joining this session. See you all in our next session. Thank you.